Alright y'all, I'm going to try to get this thing to go without making it too long because I know some of y'all got things to do and so do I. Before I get into the obvious though and we start getting into the deep subject matter, um, is it me or did every black person in the United States of the world go to the Essence Festival this past weekend? I am so jealous I didn't attend the Essence Festival. So catch this, I'm out down to the bar doing what it is I do. When I wake up, I got two missed calls. One from Candy Birds and one from Don Juan. So I'm like, oh shoot, what don't happen? I called Candy back, she didn't answer the phone, called Don back. He didn't answer the phone, I text Don. Don was like, man, we were with the cast the Underground. I guess they was trying to call me to put me on the phone with Steam them. And uh, my baby daddy know, and y'all, I don't mess around and miss my blessing. Moral of the story is, like Mama D said, don't nothing come to a sleeper but a dream. I don't mess around and miss my blessing. Shouts out to the cast of Underground. I'm get, I ain't worried about it. I missed that phone call because I know I'm going to be on that um, sound stage when we start back filming. You see, I noticed how I said we. Y'all remember they sent me some of these nice items or whatever. Y'all, that show was so good. I hope they win. The, an Emmy, Emmy nominations um, to vote for Emmy nominations just ended last week or week before last so I hope that show got all the Emmy nominations that they need to get on the ballot um, but speaking of I found this video to be right on time with what I'm saying about Underground and them calling me because I ended up popping in the DVDs that they sent me and last night after falling asleep while it was playing it really inspired some deep thoughts I popped the DVDs in because it's important for me, y'all, to remember uh, never to forget. But I also popped the DVDs in because it, one thing I do like about Underground is that it demonstrated black people coming together, fighting. We not having this shit no more. We coming together and we fighting. And y'all, my spirit was so beat down by what's been taking place lately. These two senseless murders we had back to back that I needed something to lift my spirits up and that's why I popped it in. But I want to talk about it and how I'm going to tie what's going on in the world with this show all together. Bring it home for y'all so we can get on out of here and now go to lunch break. For one, it's a crying damn show. Let me make sure because I had some deep, I had to take notes. What's the first thing I want to talk about? Okay, the senseless killings. And I'm going to start with the most recent one. The one that happened in New Orleans. The two officers trying to hold the young man down at the corner store. He ends up losing his life, and then subsequently, subsequent, subsequently, we got the one in Minneapolis with the man sitting in the damn car. Um, the police officer obviously frazzled after the lady is saying to him, "Sir, he told you he was carrying and license. You told him to get his ID." The police officer, you can hear in his voice, he was freaking scared of that man. That's why he shot him. But here's the thing: at this point, I don't care about the details and the petty nuances of what has gone on. I don't give two dams. Anybody who cannot understand what black folks have been talking about when we start saying black folks matter, this, that, and the third, let's just throw out the details of the cases. Do you not notice a damn trend? Like, really? Enough is a damn enough. I know that you've got to be white. White people, I'm telling you, y'all got to be looking at the TV like, God damn, not another one. Oh, God, now we got to hear this Black Lives Matter stuff again. Well, you know what, white folks? Y'all just about tired of hearing Black Lives Matter just as much as we tired of having to say the shit. So how about this? How about we use both of our frustrations, despite the fact that they're coming from two opposite ends of the spectrum, let's use that frustration to fuel us to make this senseless killings stop. How about white folks? Y'all go tell y'all white counterparts. Can y'all please stop shooting these Negroes so I can stop hearing Black Lives Matter? And I go tell my Black Lives Matter activists once y'all stop killing us. Can y'all please stop saying Black Lives Matter so we can all sit at the table of the brotherhood just the way Martin Luther King had that dream? Be too much like right though. You know, anybody who gets offended with that Jesse Williams speech or who cannot see what, you know, why the black community is such up in arms at this point, you are not part of the problem. You are the problem. Because if you can't see what's going on right now, it's voluntary denial. 
You are voluntarily choosing to be closed-minded. Any damn statistician from Harvard, Yale, or down where I got my degree, Florida, Florida State University in economics, we was trained to trend. And where there's a trend, there's a pattern. And where there's a pattern, there's a problem. Trend, pattern, problem. Come on now. Like, it's just clear as day. There's a trend, pattern, problem. But I'm going to tell you something. Much like the slaves of underground, black people, it's time for us to start fighting back. Okay? Now catch me. I'm not saying get physical and go riot your community. I am saying it's time for us to start taking a grassroots, a grassroots approach the way they did back in the day. And we got to start hitting these people with the only color that matters, and that is green. We need to band together. We need to boycott. In a perfect world, I wish somebody like Tyler Perry, Oprah, um, Shonda Rhimes, all the leading black people will come together, create a date, and use their platforms to tell us what day all black people don't go to work. Just don't go to work across the whole wide world. Just don't go to work. I can assure you. If all of us just skip out for a half day, we will wake up whoever the hell need to be walking up to make a damn change. The world would shut down. Lord, I know what I'm talking sounds good in theory, but I really wish it could happen in practice. Just one day, not even a whole day, just a half day, we all don't go to work. And you see how eyeballs and heads get the star rolling. Listen, I'm all for the Black Lives Matter campaign, okay? But I am of the mindset that now it is time for the Black Lives Matter campaign to be repurposed. We've done the first part, which is got out, we've hashtagged, we've tweeted, we've Instagrammed, we've marched, we've protested, we've flooded timelines with the Black Lives Matter hashtags. But my question is for those in charge, d Ray and all of y'all, and I support y'all, I'm not condemning nor coming down, but my question is, Y'all, much like Beyonce, y'all got the troops in formation. We are standing here in formation. All right? We tweeting. We hashtagging. We ready. What is the next move? Y'all, this, this tweeting and stuff did the first step, which is spread awareness to the problem. The people are now aware there is a problem. But we standing in formation waiting for somebody to give us our next orders of operation, our next responsibility, our next duties. So it's time to repurpose this campaign. Now that we know and got the message out there that Black Lives Matter, what action are we putting to the words beyond the hashtag and the retweeting, the protesting, and the speaking on the news? Somebody needs to give us some direction. Is it for us to not ride the bus? Is it for us to collectively not shop at these particular restaurants? Is it for us to collectively show up in front of our senator's house? We are waiting for our next set of operations. Quite frankly, I have a suggestion, and I and you know I'm gonna catch a little flat for this, but I think the Black Lives Matter campaign would gain so much strength and credence amongst white people and the people's ears that need the change if we also stood in solidarity when black lives were lost in any other fashion. And here's why I say that. I believe and I totally understand that all lives matter and the black lives matter spe specifically speaks to the fact that we are being picked off one by one by systematic racism and racist institutions and more over the police. I totally get that that is what the campaign was birthed out of. But here's the question I ask. What is our final destination? And our final destination is to get equality in the eyes of the law and to be treated right by those who empower. Now, rather we take the direct line, which is the Black Lives Matter, or we repurpose the campaign and take the side street. The campaign, the destination is still the same. And I think it's one of those where we have to put our overall mission above our pride. And here's what I mean by that. I think at this point now, y'all, whenever crime goes on and atrocity is committed towards a black person, we need to have that same level of energy standing out there showing that black lives matter. We need to show white people and those who are oppressing us and those in charge that we don't only chant and care about black lives matter when white people kill us. We care about black lives matter when we kill us, when they kill us, when the aliens kill us, and when the bulls in Spain kill us. We care about black lives all the way around. And here's why I say that. 
because a lot of those are a lot of those people who need to hear the Black Lives Matter message are tuning a deaf ear to the sound because they're like, shit, y'all the main ones killing y'all selves. Y'all only do this when white folks do it, and they're meeting us with defense instead of open arms and an open heart. And I think that if we can show them that we are just serious about our lives mattering, period, not just being validated when a white person kills us, but our lives matter to us, period, it would bump us up a few iotas on the whole they are not cockroaches and they're actually human. They actually care about themselves. So I'm not saying I'm right. I know I'm going to catch a little flat. But like I said, rather we take the direct approach or the side approach, as long as we get to the final destination. I know a lot of people are going to listen to my sentiments and be like, fuck that, fuck that, forget that, forget that. Nah, it's just about, it's just about when they killing us. Fuck that. Why should we have to dumb our message down because they're the ones killing us? And I totally agree with you. However, Put the final destination above your pride and your ego. Rather, we have to take two steps forward in order to take five. five if, if, if we, <laughs> regardless of if we have to take two steps backwards in order to take five forward or two, or we take one step to the final destination as long as we get there. Because obviously, what we're doing right now, you know, is not happening fast enough. It seems like we're getting killed and picked off faster than we are able to make process. Um... You know, the next thing I want to touch on is these police officers. When I watched the video of the man shooting the man in the car, and the wife was like, oh my God, the girlfriend was like, oh my God, that man, the police officer, sounded hysterical. That man sounded scared. I am a firm believer that that man shot that black man, not necessarily out of racism, out of fear because they don't understand us. They're in innately scared of us, inherently scared of us for some reason. And here's the solution I have to that because we need some immediate solutions on the local level, on the ground. We don't have time to wait for shit to sit up in the Congress, the legislature, this, that, and the third, the Supreme Court. It takes too damn long. But here's what the hell needs to be happening from my old layman, regular man, brain, mentality, simple thinker. It has, become, it has become beyond apparent that these officers are scared of black people. Then you know what? Move their ass out of these black neighborhoods, goddamn. Let me tell you something. I don't know, know how the hiring is done at police precincts and in their feeder patterns, but it needs to happen like this. The police force needs to be made up of the racial makeup of the neighborhood, goddammit. You should not have a 90% white police force policing a 90% black neighborhood because it's become apparent that they are scared of us. You see what I'm saying? They're, they're fearful of their lives and it's because they don't understand our swag, our lingo, the way we walk and more over our culture and half of them don't give two shits about our lives and think we're subhuman. Anyway, put people in these neighborhoods who can talk to the people. It's time we get back to officer friendly. The officer that will walk down the street and wave at people. How you doing Miss Jones? How your son doing? And not these old Al-Qaeda fighting Saddam Hussein looking for Osama bin Laden head chopping police officers. You should see when you go through the damn airport, you scared to even ask the damn police officer for instructions to the damn bathroom because they got on five levels of body armor, bazookas, Uzi. What's the likelihood that you honestly going to have to use that shit in a local damn airport? Y'all are scaring the damn people. The police is scared of the people and the people are scared of the goddamn police. That's why we in this damn conundrum. Here's what you need to do. I'm not saying that all white men police officers or all white police officers are innately or inherently scared of white people but are over, or black people, but an overwhelming majority of them are. So what the hell y'all need to do, y'all need to evaluate the ass. Y'all need to go get take them psychological evaluations up to the next level. Y'all need to bring in the psychologists, evaluate these damn people, and if the results find that they ass on one level or another are fearful and scared of another race, then they ass do not need to be policing areas that um, are predominantly made up of whichever race they're scared of. And I know somebody going to say that's unconstitutional, it's targeted, this and the third. So you know what, federal government, free up some more damn money and make it across the board. Psychologically evaluate everybody on the goddamn police force. Black, white, Indian, green, Mr. Kool-Aid, Barney, and everybody in between. And when those, and have those psychologists rank those results. Per this test, officer 
unfriendly, shows an aversion to black people, Indian people, then put his ass in a fucking Italian neighborhood. Put his ass in a goddamn Spanish neighborhood. And put these people to according where their mind flows and where their skill sets are. I mean, come on, something immediate needs to be done. In addition to police officers, black police officers, let me start with y'all. I saw that video of that woman the police officer who was crying and she was making a statement about fellow police officers, if you have that vest on and you're scared of the people that you need to take it off, I agree. But I'm going to take it a step further. You see what I'm saying? To all the police officers, black, white, and indifferent, it is your co-workers that are killing us. And y'all are not saying anything. Black, white, yellow police officers, y'all are not saying anything. It's up to y'all to protect y'all own reputation to help restore the faith of the people into y'all. You know what I would love to see? I would love to see a white police officer in their uniform take a selfie and hashtag, we see two. We see two. Let us know that y'all see the same damn thing we're seeing. All police officers, take a picture with you in your in, a, in your uniform and hashtag we see two. I want to know how many of y'all, black and particularly white, who will stand up and let the people know that y'all see what the hell is going on too. Stevie Wonder can even see this. So how about you police officers? Y'all take the reins. Let us know that y'all see what the hell we going through. Black officers, I leave it on y'all to set it off first. Set it off. Black law enforcement, take a picture in your uniform. Hashtag, we see two. Hashtag, black lives matter. Hashtag, everything else. Let the, restore the people's faith in the damn police. Let us know that we not damn crazy and we not out here imagining things. Police officers, I beg that if you let the people know that you see what we see too. Black officers, I leave it on y'all to set it off, and I'm sure those white people who are not scared to stand up, who are not racist, they will follow suit. What's the last thing I want to touch on? Um, um, the, the last thing I want to touch on is this one right here, because this one is dear to my heart. I'm a celebrity blogger, okay? When I got into this, I never signed up to be anybody's activist, anybody's mentor, anybody's role model, anybody's anything. I'm just me. I posted a post yesterday about something pop culture and somebody came under my comment section and was like, this the bullshit you posting with a platform as large as yours? You need to be talking about racism, this, that, and the third. And I told you about that shit once before in the past. Don't tell me what I need to do with what I have. Okay? I created this. I thank you for supporting me, but what I do with my platform is my damn business and how I do it. There's always a method to my madness. I want to take this thing a level forward because I've been guilty of this. Tyler Perry need to do this. Oprah need to do this. Shonda Rhimes need to do this. Let me tell you something. It's two ways to fight this thing. On the front end and on the back end. Everybody can't be on the front end being radical. You see what I'm saying? Somebody got to be on the back end keeping some of these doors open. Case in point, this Jesse Williams and this Shonda Rhimes thing is so so relevant to the point I'm about to make. We can't sacrifice the people who got their foot in the door like this hole in the open for us for the sake of getting a flash in the pan message on the 6 o'clock slot on the damn news. Shonda Rhimes and Jesse Smith both, or Jesse Williams, Jesse Smith, I'm, call, I'm hyped, forgive me, Jesse, and Shonda Rhimes cannot both be on the front lines, and here is why. Because had Shonda got up there and pulled the same number that Jesse pulled, Jesse wouldn't have a job to come back to when he got off that stage and came from that podium because they would have been on God with a Shonda ass and Jesse ass too. But Jesse was safe because he had the cover of Shonda being in the position that she's in, keeping the damn door open, okay? Y'all, we got to be strategic with this thing. Beyonce ain't going to be the one that's going to stand up at the damn door she got to keep the door open. Oprah and Tyler Perry, they got to keep the door open and be able to provide jobs for those of us who will get on the front lines and kick that bitch wide open. So y'all back down. Let me tell you something. The people got a method to their madness with their platforms. 
Y'all don't know necessarily what contracts that I got in place or what contract this person may have in place that may give me an even larger platform, but got to play the game until we get there. Somebody got to keep the door open. Always remember, just like somebody opened the door for you, somebody got to keep it open. And if you are currently right now standing through a door that somebody opened for you, it is your responsibility to make sure you leave that bitch open for the next person. With that being said, y'all, I'm not going to get too preachy preaching. I'm finna go in here. I'm gonna wear my underground shirt all day. Cause I'm I'm feeling real inspired right now. I'm on my Harriet tub and I'm on my I'm just on my uh and you know what I'm flowing so hard right now. I really could give y'all another 30 minutes, but I got errands and I got things to do. Like Vanessa Williams said, I, I got work to do. I gotta work, babe. I got a job, babe. I gotta work. Oh man, um, I'm being here working. In the spirit of underground, that's another thing. While I'm speaking of underground, y'all make sure y'all continue to support black art, black media, keeping the door open, keeping the message going. I hope that underground gets the Emmy it deserves. And Candy, see, Candy, you all hate it because you should have gave Alice Hodge, you should have gave Noah and Steam my number so they could have called me. Anywho, I ain't worried about it because I'll be on the plantation soon with them singing Sweet Low, Sweet Chariot. Black Lives Matter. Y'all think about the nuggets I left on y'all brain. And it's time that we take things to the next level. And um, spread love. Pay it forward. If you're in Subway, buy a white person a sandwich and let them know. We ain't all bad. We eat little sandwiches with cucumbers too. Alright, talk to you later. Bye.